Hi, Total Recapped here. Today, we will be going through the events of the 2010 action fantasy movie Prince of Persia, directed by Mike Newell. Now, warning, this video contains spoilers, so watch at your own risk. Now, let's get right into the movie. Long ago, in a land far away, there once rose an empire that stretched from the steppes of China to the shores of the Mediterranean. That empire was Persia. Fierce in battle, wise in victory. Where the Persian sword went, order followed. The Persian king Sharaman ruled with his brother Nisam upon the principles of loyalty and brotherhood. The king had two sons named Tus and Garciv who gave him great joy. But in the eyes of the god, the king's family wasn't yet complete. Not until the day he witnessed a single act of courage from an orphan boy from the streets of Nisaf. One day while King Sharaman was on his way to somewhere, a little boy named Beast inadvertently blocked the king's path. Angered by the little subject's audacity, one of Sharaman's man beats up the boy. Seeing Bis being mercilessly slapped, a boy named Dastan intervenes and throws an apple at the man. The Persian army chases the two boys throughout the market as King Sharaman watches in amazement. Dastan evades arrest but is eventually captured. The man then proceeds to execute Dastan but King Sharaman intervenes. He is blown away by Dastan's courage and selflessness. After he learns that Dastan is an orphan, Sharaman drops Dastan into his family. The boy with no royal blood and unlikeliest of places became a prince of Persia. Fifteen years pass by. Dastan and his royal-blooded foster brothers Garciv and Tus led the Persian army in an attack on Alamut. Alamut is a sacred city and even the most expansionist empires fear invading the Holy Kingdom. Tus decides to attack the city in the absence of his father after Nisam reveals that the city's people are selling weapons to their enemies. As Garciv leads the initial assault, Dastan decides to lead a surprise attack with his childhood friend Bis in order to save people on both sides from being unnecessarily massacred in the confrontation. Dastan uses bamboo to climb half a tall wall that surrounds Alamut and the other half using arrows. After he reaches the top, Dastan assists his men in climbing the wall using ropes. They quickly subdue the tower's guards and unlock the eastern gates and signal Garciv and Tuz. As the Persian army starts heading towards the eastern gate, Dastan notices the Alamut's army moving to fight the invaders. Dastan quickly blocks their way by setting the ground on fire. The Persian then breach the city on horse and take over. Meanwhile, anticipating her city's defeat, Princess Tamina of Alamut hands her guard a secret item and orders him to take it to a safe place. On his way out of the town, the guard is intercepted by Dastan. The two engage in a long fight. Dastan eventually takes him out and retrieves the mysterious item, which is revealed to be a unique dagger. Alamut falls to the Persians and Tamina is captured. Mesmerized by the princess's beauty, Tus asks her hand in marriage. She initially rejects his offer, but later agrees after learning that Dastan has seized the mysterious dagger. The Persians celebrate their victory. Before leaving to find concrete proof of Alamut's treachery, Tus asks Dastan to give the king the prayer robe of Alamut's regent as a celebratory gift. A proud father, Sharaman praises Dastan for acting boldly and courageously to bring victory and spare lives. Sharaman takes pride in adopting Dastan, noting that his blood may not have been noble, but he is a king in spirit. After presenting the prayer robe to his father, Dastan brings Princess Tamina before him and seeks his blessings for Tus and Tamina's union. Much to Dastan's astonishment, King Sharaman suggests that Dastan weds Tamina instead. Dastan, who plunges into a hundred foes without thought, freezes with fear and embarrassment. The king makes light of Dastan's shyness, but he suddenly starts shaking and collapses. It turns out the robe was poisoned. Prince Dastan, who presented the robe to Sharaman, is quickly held as the perpetrator and chaos ensues. Dastan manages to escape the castle with Princess Tamina while Bis, his best friend, is killed trying to save them. Dastan takes Tamina with him after she offers to help him get away from the city. The Persian army chases them, but they manage to get away on a horse. Dastan tells Tamina that he didn't kill his father, and he suspects that Tus killed him to ascend to the throne. Pretending to empathize with him, Tamina gets closer to Dastan and tries to snatch the dagger. However, Dastan catches up to her charade and pushes her away. A struggle follows and Dastan accidentally activates the mysterious dagger. The dagger emanates an enchanting yellow light and reverses time. 
It is revealed the dagger has some special sand that helps it rewind time for one minute, with only the holder of the dagger being aware of it. The bearer could go back in time, alter events, and change times. After learning of the dagger's power, Destan speculates that Tuz must not have known about the dagger. Tuz framed Destan for their father's murder in an attempt to seize the throne and the dagger to become the most powerful ruler of Persia. The next day, Destan insists on going to Avrat to attend his father's funeral and try to convince his uncle Nisam about Tuz's evil plans. Destan is forced to take Princess Tamina with him after she questions his manhood for abandoning a helpless woman in the middle of nowhere. Destan and Tamina bicker throughout their journey. When Tamina mocks Destan for walking like a boastful prince, he reveals that he wasn't born a royalty unlike her. They eventually reach their destination and watch over King Charmin's funeral procession with delegations from all around the world participating. Tamina uses her connections to disguise themselves amongst the dignitaries. At an opportune time, Destan covertly meets Nassam. Destan tells him about everything, including the dagger and sand. When he proceeds to show the dagger to Nisam, he realizes that Tamina has stolen the dagger from him. Destan then notices the burns on Nisam's hands, which indicate he was the one who set up the murder of the king. Destan's suspicion is confirmed when he realizes that Nisam has set up an ambush for him. A fierce chase throughout the street follows. Destan is attacked by strings of Persian soldiers and bombarded with arrows. Destan is also attacked by his brother, Garcib. While dodging attacks, Destan tries to convince his brother that Tuz orchestrated their father's assassination, but without success. Destan eventually subdues Gersiv and flees. Later, Nisam returns to Nasaf and meets the newly crowned king. Nisam falsely alleges that Destan came to Avara to assassinate him and wants to ascend to the throne. Nisam, aware that Destan knows he was responsible for killing Charmin, suggests that Destan should be brought back to Nasaf dead. However, Tuz insists on honoring the rule of law and putting Dasan on trial to send a message to his people about the king that he hopes to be. Unable to convince Tuz, Nisam hires the Hassanans, a group of highly skilled warriors who once served as hired killers for Persian royalty. Nisam had kept the sect hidden for his own use after Sharman had them disbanded. Meanwhile, Dasan looks for Tamina. He eventually catches up to her and takes back the dagger. He discloses his uncle's involvement in the murder of the king to Tamina. Destan realizes that Nisam couldn't have murdered Sharaman just to rewind a few moments of time. He tells Tamina if she wants to have the dagger back, she must tell him everything about Alamut. Left with no other choice, Tamina reveals that the city of Alamut hides a massive sand glass under it, and the sand glass contains the sand that powers the dagger. Long ago, the gods sent a great sandstorm to destroy and wipe the face of the earth after seeing nothing but greed and treachery on earth. But one young girl begged the gods to give the world another chance, offering her life in exchange. Seeing the purity of her heart, the gods were reminded of men's potential for good and swept the sands into the sand glass. The dagger was given to the girl who saved mankind, making her the first guardian. The dagger blade is the only thing that can pierce the sand glass and remove the sand of time, but the dagger's handle only holds enough sand to rewind time by one minute. If one were to place the dagger in the sand glass and press the jewel button at the same time, the sand would flow endlessly and one could turn back time as far as they like. Destan speculates that Nisam intends to go back in time when he saves Sharman from being attacked by a lion. He wants to undo the act to ensure that he becomes the king of Persia. However, Tamina reveals that the sand glass is the vessel holding the sands of time which the gods conjured to punish humanity for its sins and should the dagger of time be used to pierce the sand glass, the sands would be released and destroy the entire world. Putting aside their differences, Destan and Tamina join hands to protect the dagger and take it to a sanctuary, the secret guardian temple outside Alamut. Now along their journey, the pair are taken hostage by a group of merchant bandits led by Sheikh Amar and his friend Siso. Siso hails from Nimbaka and is a master of the throwing knives. The bandits take the dagger of time and intend to hand over Destan to King Tuz for reward. When the bandits retire for the night, Hassanson leader unleashes a number of trained vipers on the group. However, Destan notices the snakes and saves Cecil's life by throwing a snake in the fire. Destan asks Cecil to hand him the dagger and uses it to rewind time. Foreseeing the attack, he manages to kill all the snakes single-handedly. An amazed Hassanson leaves in a sand dervish, but not before Destan learns about his involvement in the attack. The next day, after being promised gold as rewards, Sheik and Siso accompany the pair to their secret sanctuary in the mountains near India. 
Tamina intends to seal the dagger by returning it to the stone where it came from, but in the process, Tamina would have to sacrifice herself. However, at the mountains, they run into Garciva and his men. Destand manages to persuade his brother Garciva that he is innocent and tells him about Nisam's involvement. Garciva reveals that Nisam recommended his death to King Tus, which Destand attributes to Nisam's fear of being exposed by him. The two brothers suddenly hear noises coming from outside. When Garciv inspects, he gets sprayed with spike knives thrown by Hassansen and collapses on the ground. As the Persian army and the bandits take on the Hassansons, Tamina heads towards the sacred stone, followed by Dastan. A love-struck Dastan tells her that he won't let her sacrifice herself, and the two proceed to kiss when the Hassansen leader manages to swat the dagger from Tamina, knocking her unconscious in the process. As Dastan takes on the leader, a trained Hassansen snake devours the dagger. After seizing the dagger, the Hassansons flee. Dastan is saved from the last Hassansin by an injured Garciv, who then succumbs to his injuries, but not before asking Dastan to save the Empire. After gaining possession of the dagger, Nisam begins digging tunnels to the sand glass caves beneath Alamut. Meanwhile, Tamina and Dastan return to Alamut to reveal the truth about Nisam and the dagger to Tus. They are accompanied by Sheik and Siso, who offered to help after learning the truth about the dagger. First, they must get the dagger, which Tamina learns is kept in the sacred temple, guarded by the Hassansen. Using Princess Tamina's help, Cecil sneaks into the temple and is immediately attacked by a spike-wielding Hassansen. A lengthy battle follows. Eventually, Cecil manages to kill the Hassansen after a well-aimed throw and reaches the dagger, but realizes that he too managed to fatally wound him with spikes. A wounded Cecil collects all of his strength and throws the dagger out of the window to Sheik and Dastan before giving in to his wounds. Nisam learns about Dastan's presence and orders his men to look for him. Sheik Amar distracts the guards by serving as a decoy while Dastan and Tamina sneak into the palace to warn Tus. Dastan takes Tus hostage at knife point to talk to him alone and tells him about Nisam as Tamina watches from a distance. He reveals the secret about the dagger and sands of time beneath the streets of Alamut and Nisam's intentions to turn back time to make himself the Persian king. Tus discards these revelations as heresies and pagan madness. Unable to convince his brother and left with no choice, Dastan tells Tus to press the jewel on the dagger's hilt before stabbing himself to death. After Dastan collapses on the ground, Tus activates the dagger and rewinds time by one minute. After learning the truth, when Dastan again proceeds to stab himself, Tus stops his brother. Just as Dastan takes a sigh of relief, Nisam arrives. He slits Tus' throat while Dastan is incapacitated by another Hassansin. Nisam retrieves the dagger and, before leaving, orders the Hassansen to finish off Dastan. After Nisam leaves, Tamina distracts them and Dastan and then neutralizes him. She learns that the Hassansen was one of her own people and had been a spy inside the city of Alamut. The traitor must have been the one who told Nisam about the dagger. Nisam goes to the sand glass caves beneath Alamut as Dastan and Tamina race to stop him. Tamina opens a secret gate leading to the chamber, allowing them to take a shortcut to the sand glass. However, the two soon get separated when the ground below Dastan caves. Dastan then encounters the leader of the Asansons. An intense battle follows. The Asansen manages to overpower Dastan and backs him up against a wall. The Asansen snake then proceeds to bite Dastan, but Tamina grabs the snake and makes it bite the Asansen instead. Dastan then stabs him before throwing him into the chasm. Dastan and Tamina kiss. The two then intercept Nisam. Dastan attacks them, but Nisam easily subdues him with a knife. He knocks Dastan and then Tamina over the edge of the chasm, but Dastan desperately catches her hand. Soon, Dastan's grip gets weaker and weaker. With the time running out to stop Nisam, Tamina pleads with Dastan to let her go and stop Nisam. Dastan refuses to let her die, but Tamina professes her love for him and lets go, sacrificing herself to stop Nisam. Nisam then pierces the sand glass with the dagger, but Dastan quickly pulls himself up and presses the dagger's button to open the sands of time container before Nisam. The sand glass slowly cracks and the sandstorm is shown, destroying Alamut. Dastan uses the dagger to turn back the time as the sand glass breaks, ending up at the point when he first held the dagger during the siege of Alamut. Dastan then reveals Nisam's evil plan to his brothers. Exposed, Nisam attempts to kill Dastan, but Dastan subdues him and tells him how ungrateful Nisam was to take the love, respect, and family he had for granted. When Dastan turns his back, Nisam proceeds to attack him, but Tus intervenes and kills Nisam. Tus apologizes to Princess Tamina for ransacking her city and suggests that perhaps Tamina should become Dastan's wife as a sign of goodwill. 
Prince Dastan gets on his knees and returns the dagger of time to her as a gift as she looks at him in astonishment. Tamina talks to Dastan privately and expresses her surprise about Dastan's sudden change of heart. Dastan replies that they hardly know each other to know what's in each other's heart, but he tells her that he looks forward to the day they do. The movie ends. That was my recap of the movie. Hope you enjoyed it. Now comment on what your favorite part was and make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, this has been Total Recaps.